If you have your Bibles, we ask you to turn to First Chronicles, First uh, Chronicles 16, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. First Chronicles 16. In the first verse, the Bible says, "So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David pit, that David had pitched for it." And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of, the, every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread, a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, and Jehiel, and Shemermoth, and Jehiel, and Mataniah, and Eliab, and Baniah, and Obedim, and Jael with psalteries and with harps, but Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Maniah also and Jehaziel, the priest with trumpets continually, priest with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. And on that day, David delivered his delivered first this song to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his name, let, your heart, let the heart of them rejoice that seek him, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. God, we thank you for uh, your goodness and your uh, blessings upon the church here at Dover. God, we thank you and praise you for that. Lord, we thank you for the Lord, your other churches that are meeting to glorify your name this morning. God, help us bless the word to our hearts this morning, and we'd be faithful to get you, give you the praise and the glory for it. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, some maybe so-so familiar verses of Scripture uh, in the Old Testament, and if you know where it's coming from, uh, they had kind of uh, set up the city of David that would be Jerusalem, and, uh, the day, and David thought it very important that there be a special place for the tent of the Lord. Now, I think historically, probably the true tabernacle was gone because it specifically says he set up a tent. He did not say he set up the tabernacle with the layers of badger skin and fine linen and down and down until you get the very place of God. It didn't have that. So he set up a tent for it. Now, I'll say this. We, as the Lord's people, we need to set up a place somewhere every day for Amen. the Lord. Right. Now, it doesn't have to be a tent, and it doesn't have to be a special room. It doesn't have to necessarily be a prayer closet, but it needs to be somewhere at a specific time during the day where you lay out your needs before God and you worship Him. Now, most of us, and it's the nature of man, don't have any issue with laying out our needs, but worship is something totally different, isn't it? Uh, you know what? Our great God uh, deserves worship in the good and the bad. He, he deserves worship when we're being blessed, and He deserves worship when things are rough and hard. He always deserves worship. And, and so we find that David is putting forth a very huge effort to make this happen among his people. Now, very quickly, just go back to 15 in the first verse, uh, 1 Chronicles 15, and notice what it says, And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Now, essentially the same thing that uh, we read before, but I want you to see there was provision for other things 
And so David, naturally being a man of God, knew that there needed to be provision for the things of God as well. Uh, you know, if tithing is an issue with, uh, with you, uh, you have something wrong with you spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if you don't think, you know what you're really saying is, I'm more important than the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and so uh, we, we find that David honors that and he sets up a tent. He sets up a special place for the Lord. Now, all of you know this, but I will remind you that he prepared the lumber and some of the stuff to build the house of the Lord. And he sent finances aside, but because of his sin in his life, he could never uh, he could never build it. But he always had his mind toward a place of God. Now, I'll ask you this. Do you always have your mind toward a place of God? And I'm not talking about this little building the Lord gave us. It's fine. It's nice. Good and cool in here this morning. But that's not what I'm talking about. Do you have a time for the Lord? Do you have a place for the Lord? Do you have a nearness unto the Lord? Because that's the real question. And so as David is beginning to start a very worshipful time with the Lord's people. Now, and I'll say one more thing regarding that and we'll move on. Listen, we don't need to let the Pentecostals take the worship from us. We didn't come here just to simply hear a message. We came here to, uh, to worship the Lord, or I trust you did. Yeah. And that doesn't happen by happenstance. That doesn't happen simply because we do show up. That happens when we set our mind to the things of God and we come here with a genuine uh, purpose and a genuine attitude of worship. And when, he, when we do that, he is lifted up. And, and David was right on point. And David had gotten the congregation co collectively in a point to serve the Lord. So they brought the ark of God. Now, if you think about that, that, that was something to say. And all of you know that how that it couldn't be directly touched. And, and the staves had to be put in the, in, in the golden rings. And, and the stave could be touched, but the box couldn't be touched. And all that went involved in moving the ark of the covenant. Now, when it was all said and done, all that the ark of the covenant was was a wood box with gold over it, right? When, when, when it was all said, it's a beautiful thing to look upon. But that's really all it is. Well, you know what? Well, you know what a box is? It's a wooden shell. And usually it has something inside of it, right? And uh, we know some of the items that were in the Ark of the Co Covenant, the, the literal law of God written by the finger of, uh, of the great God Jehovah and Aaron's rod that budded. And, and uh, there was at one time a basket of, uh, of manna in there. And there were a few items that of God's provision in there. But you know, when it's all said and done, it's a wood box. You know what that tells me? God will meet you anywhere. Now that was their symbol of God, but it wasn't God. And they carefully placed that in a regular, everyday tent. Isn't that a marvelous, wonderful thing? You know what? He's still doing that today. He's facing his mightiness in a regular, everyday, stinking, carnal flesh for his own glory and his right. own honor. That's why he does that. And, and so we see that David is approaching this thing in a very serious matter. Uh, a matter. He did not think worshiping the Lord Jesus was to be taken lightly. So they brought the ark of God, uh, of God and set it in the midst of the tent and David, that David had pitched for it. And they burnt, offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. Now, Brother Jared probably could tell us all the pieces that were into that, and, and I knew them at one time, and I've already forgotten them again, but Jared could tell us what each of those men and what each items were to be sacrificed with that. But I want you to see the next thing that is involved in that and is that it takes some effort. Now, uh, some of my people on tobacco port are living like dogs because we had it a lot worse than the rest of you. And, uh, uh, and Donna looked at me like I had seven heads, and I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to go to the church and take a shower. And uh, she, uh, she goes, why? I said, well, I don't want to go stinking. And, uh, and she acted like I had never taken a bath before. And, uh, and uh, I said, 
You know, that's part of preparation, is it not? I try to find some of the best clothes I got to put on, and, uh, and and at least fix myself up a little bit and prepare for the house of the Lord. That's the same thing. You should prepare to be here, right? Both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Right. We need to be prepared for the house of the Lord, and that's exactly what David did. And, and, and it took time, it took sacrifice, it took uh, being prepared so that the service would go well, and, and that it would be orderly, and that it would be right. And and he did exactly that. Uh, verse two, and David made at the end of the offering, the burnt offerings. And the peace offerings, and I want to see all this is plural, meaning one. You know what we do? We sing one song and get mad and go home. You know what? I bet it wasn't cartwheel turning the first little peace offering that stood out there. Do you? I, I don't think uh, the first time, the first little turtle dove that was taken out, man, they were running the aisles and shouting glory. See, it takes consistency. And you know what? It, you may be on the 30 or 40th turtle dove before you get a thing. Right? We want instantaneous, don't we? You know what worship takes? It takes effort. And we live in a day where that's few and far between. Mm -hmm. We really do. We don't want nothing that's hard, do we? And, and, and so we find that uh, David apparently had an understanding of this and was very continual in what he was doing. And notice in verse 3, now this is out of his own personal account, his own personal money, not out of the Lord's treasury. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, and that's a huge amount of people, to everyone a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. Now, everybody want to get all upset, but you know what a flagon of wine is? It's a glass of wine. In fact, when I looked it up, according to the scriptures, it was a pretty hefty dose of wine. I mean, he was going all out for them. And it wasn't so that they'd be drunk and throw down and party. But he gave them a very specific gift, didn't he? Bread. <laughs> I am the bread of life. Amen. You know what? When you come in here, your, your, your mind needs to be on Christ. Amen. I am the bread of life. He give them wine. That's the blood of the that's a type of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you when you think you're getting cocky and you've arrived, you remember what you really are, and that you're just simply hid, hid behind the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, the last thing and it was sacrificial, and that was a meat offering, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but you know, the good thing about me, and oh, we used to have a uh, house full of nurses now it's down to me and Don. And uh, but you, you know what we tell people to heal wounds? Increase your protein. You're not gonna have good wound healing eating vegetables. Now despite everybody, you know, vegetables and other vegetables, vegetables, and they are good for you. But you know what? If you have an open wound on your body and all you eat vegetable, you'll die from that wound. Mm -hmm. Give us some, some sustenance, didn't he? David was being very good to his people. And, and uh, you know you know why I think he throwed out such a good meal? Because he wanted him to worship. He wanted him to be energized. He wanted him to be strong. You know what? Think about what the Lord has done for you this week. Is it, is it not a, a fact that we ought to worship Him and we're strong and healthy and get up and do for ourselves? Should we not worship Him just for what we have? So David prepared his people as well. Uh, verse 4, and uh, he made these appointments. And not an appointment, I'm making make a medical appointment, but it was something like this. Uh, Kenny, I want you to paint the building. Jared, I want you to uh, I want you to uh, paint the ceilings. Junior, I want you to lay some new block. You see what I'm saying? Very, very specific. And some of it was uh, it was all worship tasks, though, was it not? But it was work. You know, I think sometimes when we come to worship. And there's nothing wrong with tradition. We're so led by tradition, there's no real work to it, isn't it? Now they say the presents give you three hots and a cot. 
I believe, believe we've about come to be satisfied that with the Lord's worship pattern. Now, what we come in and just begin to talk about the goodness of God. Not the first song, second song, uh, not just scriptural, but just begin to talk of the goodness of God and the things He's brought you through and the ways that He has made things good unto you and just talk of the goodness of God. You know what? I don't see anything in the scripture where that would be erroneous to you. I really don't. So they became they came equipped. And then there were assignments made how the worship was to be done. And we find that there's a number of musical instruments made, uh, uh, noted of, and there was a number of things that they were to do, and, and continual sacrifice the whole time. You know, I, I don't know how uh, how true this is, but I read this, and I think it was J.R. Graves who said of his church in Nashville, the best I understand, he pastored First Baptist Nashville. And uh, uh, he'd probably turn over in his grave if he could see it today. But the way that I understood, his pulpit was up and there's a basement in that building just like this one. And five men would be under this pulpit in the basement praying the whole time he was preaching. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You know, that, that's kind of what the continuum, he says, you do these pigeons the whole time we're going through this. See, there needs to be a continual thing, don't it? And somehow we've been convinced that we're just along for the ride. No, no. If you want a worship that's real, then you have to be involved. And so we see the assignments were made. And see, you know, this is the thing with assignments. And when I taught school, I did the very, I, I did this. And then even when I was in school, I could identify. You know why I made assignments? It was two things. Number one, I wanted to see how much they were getting. And number two, they needed to be accountable. And if they didn't get my, and it might be just one little page on what they did in clinicals that day. But if I didn't get it, you know what? I took it off their grade. And the reason why is because I had made them accountable for it and they didn't do it. See, in, in the modern day, we're not accountable for worship, do we? Right. Well, dear friend, you are. You may not be accountable to me because I'm your pastor, but you're accountable to one greater than me. And we're here to worship the Lord. Right. And, and so we find then um, that David makes his assignments and this wonderful worship time begins, and verse 8 will begin with it, give thanks unto the Lord. Uh, we got here, I talked about the storm last night, and I tried to just simply thank the Lord that it went as well as it did for us. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot more damage all around us, but God protected us and guided, uh, and guided us through that, and we ought to give Him thanks. You know what? And, and this is the thing, if one of those big uh, old tulip poplars down there at the house that fell on it and split the house in two, but my family is safe, I should have still praised the Lord. Amen. See, we, we forget about that part of it. There's not a day that comes that he's not worthy of praise. Wow. Not a day that passes by. And so we find then, as the Lord's people, sometimes we we fail in that, so if you don't have anything else that you can contribute, thank Him for who He is. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. You know what? It still amazes me after all these years. Uh, I remember Artist Winnick. It was the week that the Lord saved me as a boy, and he was preaching during the vacation Bible school. Listen, it wasn't a normal vacation Bible school in color on a page, but the gospel was being preached and and it really hit home for me and I've heard it many times but what he said you know right behind that three wheel church here in Carl Creek literally is at the end of the church I mean it is right on the creek and he was up and he said our Lord Jesus walked across something a lot bigger than that no, glorify his name. He, he talked, and he said, can you imagine them literally walking out? And when the cross creek at Carlisle, that's a mouthful, is in blood, it's a mess. And our Lord Jesus could just walk. He's above problems. Something but that, no matter what problem you have, 
He's above it. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him, uh, give him what is definitely due unto his name. And uh, we'll be the better for it. Verse 10, glory ye his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Now notice the two words there. Rejoice, let him that rejoice that seek the Lord. Now remember when our Lord Jesus Christ was in his earthly ministry and he gave us the, the parable of the woman that had lost one of her pieces. When did she rejoice? After she found it, right? He said, she called her neighbors in and they had a party. What do we do when we're, seek we're seeking? Typically. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? You always see Donald looking for her phone. Right? And so, there should be joy in that too, right? He, he, the, if I understood that verse, exactly what it said. He said, praise the Lord while you're seeking. Now, praise Him when He's there. Praise Him when His Spirit is full. And praise Him when it's not. It's hard to praise the Lord when all you're doing is feel that you're cold and indifferent and on the backside of nowhere. But remember this, Moses found God in the backside of nowhere. Remember? And so then we as the Lord's people, certainly we ought to seek the Lord continually because listen, this is the thing, the Lord doesn't change. Uh, Malachi 3, 6 makes that very clear, but at this very same token, at the very same time, his revelation of his will for your life specifically, it doesn't change, but it changes to you because you may not have been this. Remember what they, when Joshua, they fix and cross over, what did Joshua say? We've not been this way hitherto. Right. So he may have a brand new plan for you. Seek it. Seek with the Lord, seek the Lord while he may be found. And, and so instead of being miserable in the seeking, be joyful in the seeking. Verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Now here, uh, uh, David writes down some very good advice. He gives us another, a number of things to seek. And the first thing is to seek the Lord. You know what? That is not Armenian teaching, is it? Seek the Lord. Every one of you that are lost under the sound of my voice, you go with Him. You go after Him 110%. You seek Him. You seek Him in your, His Word. You seek Him in his, your prayers. You seek Him with everything that you have. That's not Armenian teaching. That's what the Bible teaches. No. And are you an elect? I have no idea. And you know what? Until the Lord saves you, you don't have any idea either. Right. right? So you seek Him. You, you, you seek Him like you're courting your wife all over again. Call. You know, when, when me and Donna was dating, there, weren't none of these, there sure weren't none of these. And he, he was wealthy and he had a cord with his phone. That little apartment made mother lived in. The phone was in the very middle of the house. And Judy had done about ruined it by the time she left home. And the cord would stretch from here to that room in there. And uh, I would go and get the closet and talk to Donna. I'm not kidding. The closet was in the kitchen. Mom would put some of her food and stuff in there. And I'd go in the closet and slam the door. It couldn't quite reach my bedroom. And we would talk and talk and talk and talk. And then uh, we'd hang out. I'll, be, I'll go back to my bedroom or he looks at me. Oh, I forgot to tell him tell about that. Now, I would call him back and say, hey, I'm going to say something. Now, half the time I probably made it up. I <laughs> see, I was seeking her, right? I wouldn't go let it go. And you know, a lot of times what we do, just let it go. Right? But the advice of David was far different. Uh, he says, you seek the Lord. You seek Him as a person. You seek Him as an entity. You seek Him as God. 
You seek the Lord. And he makes us responsible. Then this next thing he says, seek his strength. Mm. Oh, what a wonderful thing. You know why people are quitting? They're not seeking his strength. You know why people are being washed by the wayside? They're not seeking, seeking his strength. You know why churches are closing their doors and going to the house? They're not seeking the strength of the Almighty. Do you think it's the will of God for church to close? I think sometimes it is. I think sometimes churches come with a purpose and they die. But man, I think we use that as an excuse to yeah. <clears throat> Right? Seek the will of the Lord. <laughs> you know what? I'll guarantee you this. He won't bring you to a bridge you can't cross. If you seek Him. If you look unto Him, He'll get you through. And you know what? This is the reality. There may not be no bridge there to cross, but He'll make a way. He did for Israel. And, and so we see then... The strength of our Almighty God is, is unmanageable. Uh, we, we can't really fathom what, what is available to us. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Who sought the Lord's face? Who wanted to see Him? Moses. That's exactly right. He was denied that, and y'all all know the reason why he had to die if he did it. But um, he wanted to. Mm -hmm. I want to see his face too. Mm -hmm. I can make a reference. I don't know exactly what the Lord Jesus would look like in his glorified form. Uh, I know he he appeared in different ways following the resurrection. He told uh, Thomas, he said, reach hither. Throw your hand in there. Where the spear wound is, I want you to feel that. Now, I don't think Thomas ever did it, but he had the opportunity. Look at these. Right there and right there. Bring your finger in that. And then, there were, those two boys walked down to Damascus with him. And they talked to him, and they was amazed at his, uh, his tension. Uh, his retention of information amazed at what he had for him. And then he says, uh, uh, the Lord cut himself. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's an amazing, you know, you remember what they said? They said, did our hearts not burn within us? You know, uh, when, when you're telling someone of your own salvation, <laughs> if all you can say is, I just knew, I just felt the, the burden of sin roll away. I felt him in my spirit. That's fine. That's what them boys said, was it not? Then our hearts not burn within us. And they ran all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the church there of their experience with Christ. That's a wonderful thing, is it not? And, and, and so we find that's a good spiritual barometer for you this morning. Did you want to see him? We sung a little bit about that, uh, but do you, can you really say that and, and mean it? So he says, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually, remember his marvelous works that he has done. Mm -hmm. You say, well, brother, he ain't done that much for me. Well, shame on you, right? You know, there's not... One thing God can't see us through. No. And, and some of us have more blood. Well, I won't even say that. Some of us have more obvious blessings than others. I stand here today because of the goodness of God. Time and time again, the only thing I come to is it just wasn't my time. He delivered me from death again and again and again. <laughs> Brother Junior. You know, I pretty much did, I don't think I ever told him this, when they called from Fort Campbell and uh, the angel service on Fort Campbell contacted me and I radioed back and before I even put the radio down, the phone was ringing and I picked it up and uh, said who I was. And they said, do you know your mother-in-law said that? And I said, yes, yeah, she's shopping. <laughs> and uh, I said, why? 
Well, your father-in-law has been hurt, and it's bad. And I said, well, how bad is it? And they said, it's real bad. And I said, is he alive? And they said, we can't tell you that. So uh, about that time, Don was hanging out with Junior's sister was involved, and we finally located him. But that was a horrific thing, wasn't it? That, that was unbelievable. Sometimes I stood there in disbelief and could not believe what was happening. But you know what? God's been good to us. Hey. Have three, four, five beautiful children. God's been good to me. Mm -hmm. Four unbelievable grandchildren. God's been good. I don't have to face death tremor. No, God's been good. Amen. No. I may die, I may be the next month to go. But the is, God's been good. Uh, we, we need to remember to count our blessings. You know that little song, children's song we give, um, we tell each country with little blessings and then one by one. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful song, but I think we've almost been little. The blessings of God. Listen, it's not just a sing song song. Mm -hmm. You do that, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I was telling Brother Junior, I'm kind of restricted this morning. I don't, you know, you gotta love these Tennessee summers. Uh, but you know what? I can get one down. And I'm good at pink, so I'm not suffering from deprivation. God's been good. <laughs> See, we, you know what we've come to do is measure blessings by the standard of this world. And if the devil dupes you in that way, he'll soon convince you you're not blessed. Mm -hmm. That you need to get in a little overtime and work Sundays too. That, that's, that's the way he operates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you begin to see the wonderful, marvelous blessings in your life, what a glory. What, what a wonderful thing. We need, we need to understand that. No. Uh, we need to certainly begin to look at our lives for what they are. And, 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 and more important than that, what they potentially could be if we're totally given to the Master's use. Have you saw his face recently? Have you thought about the marvelous things he's done for you even this week? You know, I think most of you, all of you know that I like genealogy. And I look at some of the situations my ancestors got in and you wonder how they got out. Well, I know how they got out. It was because of the goodness of God. Uh -huh. And see, we, we need to remember that. Uh, and don't, don't get torn up when you see things coming down the pot. God's got a plan. Will the chip come? You bet you it'll come. Now, it may, may not be in my lifetime. I think it will be. It might not be, but your generation, y'all gonna have a choice to make. And either you get it or you don't. I mean, oh, Larry, I ain't gonna do that. You, 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 you told me, no, 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 I ain't gonna do that. When you look at them youngins and they don't get food unless you do, you might change your tune. Right? See, we need to be worshiping the Lord in the worst of worst situations. We need to give Him praise. And, and, and so how could you possibly, at the point of seeing your children and grandchildren go hungry, how could you possibly praise the Lord? Well, begin to think on eternal things. Look how good, he, look how good He's been to you. If all you can say right now, I'm saved. You may not know where your next meal is coming from, but you're saved. Man, that's something to praise God for, is it not? You couldn't be facing hell. That's when there's no hope, is it? So this morning, I ask you sincerely, uh, have you sought God this week? Do you seek Him before you go to bed? Do you seek Him when you rise up? 
Seems like most of the time, at least, I'm a little bit clearer in the early part of the day. So I wake up and I begin to try to seek the Lord. And uh, I have to say, this one, the uh, written one, is usually by my phone, but I try to grab my phone and not to check Facebook immediately, although I do, I'm not going to lie to you. I try, I have a full King James Bible in there. And I try to begin to thumb through some stuff and remember the goodness of God. And then I try to pray some and remember the goodness of God. See, that's what we, that's what we need. I want to see this yeah. if, if I never ever get, and I don't think you will in this flesh, you'll never be satisfied with your relationship with Christ. Right. But it can be get better. Amen. To the giving up of this life. You know what? I would leave Moses in the very satisfied dying. Yeah. If he just got to see him. Yeah. But it wasn't God's plan. 